you know, women's football in Spain? Well, the thing is that when we talk about women's football in Spain, people, they are going to think directly about Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico de Madrid. But those are structures that already exist. They are already a brand. So right. for them, it's easier to capture the attention because mm. that, that brand already exists. Right. But if we just focus into female football, women football in a country, but even more in southern Spain, where... Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Sporting World Podcast. And today I'm here with Juan. And Juan, first of all, thanks for taking the time. And how's, how's life, in, uh, life in Spain these days? Well, thank you for inviting me here. And uh, things are going great. Uh, well, you know, Spain, sunny, good food, <laughs> sports. So what can we say? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, I can't imagine. It's always, you know, something that I think uh, me and my fellow Norwegians always want to go, you know, south to Spain, you know, Portugal, the, the heat. Luckily, I'm going a little bit south soon. But in the meantime, you know, I just have to, you know, get, get that warmth feeling from you through this podcast. <laughs> great, great. All right. Well, I mean, like, first of all, thanks, like I said, for taking the time. We're going to dive a little, little bit into, you know, your background, uh, the, yeah, a little bit about, you know, the work that you're doing now. And why don't you, why don't you kind of like just start off, uh, talk a little bit about how your journey in the sport industry began. Take, take it to kind of like how things started off for you. Okay. Well, the thing is, like, I've always loved sports like since i was a kid and right. the first thing i was doing in the morning was getting into uh, the tele television goes into yeah. the sports news then getting the newspaper sports asking about the last results about basketball football uh, biking everything everything yeah. but the thing is like when when i finished my high school i got into uh, nursing i became a registered nurse then a teacher and now since I got back here in Spain, I'm an entrepreneur, right. but always related to sports, always practicing a lot of the sports, basketball, football, uh, uh, surfing, uh, breakdancing, a lot right. of things. But right. something that got me when I was living abroad for 16 years in the States, England and France, was everything related to sports for women and mostly soccer mm -hmm. in the States. So right. when I got back here, I decided to create the only female football club of the city of Granada. And uh, I've been uh, into the entrepreneurship for already three years, three and a half years. And uh, I just love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And I'm like, it's a great story. And it, it, all, it all starts with the passion, right? And uh, just, you know, finding that pathway into the industry. And I mean, like for you as well, I think it's, you know, not not just being in sports, but especially as we're talking about like, you know, women's football, women's soccer. And and as as you were saying, you know, you, you are obviously the president of Internacional Granada. Maybe that's a little bit more Italian pronunciation. I don't know. But that's uh, good, that's good. but <laughs> uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. But tell me a little bit about the club, you know, the role that you have and, and some of the tasks that you have involved with it. Okay, so the thing is like, when I got to Granada, I started creating a community, an international community with people from uh, about 25, 30 different countries for right. practicing right. languages. And from that moment, after a year, they told me, hey, one day we should just start with the sports. And I said, okay, let's go, let's just start with football. So, yeah. so we did it. And after two months, we were already a group of 200 people in which uh, there were more and more girls and they were asking hey we would like to compete and we'd like to play against other teams and all the stuff so yes. we decided to create the first uh, 100 percent uh, female football club in the city of granada yes. so uh, it was a great pe period talking about hey we're gonna create something different but yeah. it was during covid right. so it didn't help at all it wasn't <laughs> a, a good thing but uh, the thing is, like, uh, we've been uh, with the project for already three years. I'm the president and I'm also the CEO. Mm. And uh, I've been like creating the, the team for administration, for marketing, communication, and also uh, related to sports. So yes. right now in the structure, we are more or less like uh, 15 people. Uh, we're trying to develop now the business uh, to create uh, the income that we need 
to yeah. keep growing because we are focusing, we've created a business plan for two years, five years, and 10 years. Right. And uh, we would like to be a semi-professional instructor uh, within uh, three years and then uh, within seven years, a uh, professional instructor. So nice. that's uh, what we're working on right now. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting years ahead, you know, and, uh, you know, as you know, starting from scratch, you know, there's a lot of challenges, a lot of things that come uh, come across that. And I, I wanted to obviously, you know, talk a little bit about, especially also, you know, growing women's football in Spain, like what have been some of your, you know, key priorities to continue that growth and also like you mentioned obviously the pandemic hasn't really you know helped the situation but but what what challenges have you faced along the way as well in order to you know growing the club growing you know women's football in Spain well the thing is that when we talk about women's football in Spain people they are gonna think directly about Barcelona Real Madrid Atletico de Madrid but those are structures that already exist. They are already a brand. So right. for them, it's easier to capture the attention because mm. that, that brand already exists. Right. But if we just focus into female football, women football in a country, but even more in Southern Spain, where still the mentality is just, hey, no, girls, they cannot play football. Mm. It's impossible. Why? Why are you going to allow your girl to play football? Well, the thing is that everybody can run, everybody can swim. Hey, everybody can play football. Right. So why not? Yeah. So that social point of view has been like really hard, really hard here. And then also talking about uh, the point of view of what we say in the media, in right. the politicians, uh, the FIFA, UEFA, what they say, and then what it's really done just for female football in the background. Yeah. I can say that there is a problem because uh, it's not really like that. Right. Is it going to change? Well, we need more projects like the one that we're doing. We want to push also people say, hey, it's not easy, but do it because with that, you're going to help women's football to keep yeah. growing. Yeah. And uh, we've been facing those uh, problems and then well, here uh, in Granada, uh, we're looking for a field just for girls. We are always the last one to be like the priority for guys. Always like, hey, we want to train. Yeah, for sure. The last hour in the worst place. But why? No, because first we need to give it to the other teams. Yeah, but those are always for uh, guys, for, right. for men. But uh, it, it's not easy. And then talking about sponsorships, that uh, has been hard because, well, the economy in Spain is not easy and even less uh, after uh, COVID. Now it's going to grow again, but yeah. during COVID it was really hard because Southern yeah. Spain lives from tourism. It's one of the most yeah, no, it's places in the whole, whole world. So, and well, that's why now we are developing the brand for the uh, academy, for the trips and all the stuff. But uh, right. it takes time. We're working hard on it. And I know that we're doing a great job and we're going to keep having a lot of challenges because uh, that, that's life. But I remember when we threw out the first team, we started with 14 girls and we got them out of uh, Instagram. And then from that moment, now we are talking in our club about uh, 120, 130 girls. So go. yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> step by step, you know, it takes takes time, and obviously it's a process. And and obviously you mentioned a little bit about the academy, but talk a little bit about before we dive uh, into the uh, international football academy as well. To just talk a little bit about some of the key priorities that you have in order to continue growing, you know, the club. Uh, you know, and then and, and working around the, the the challenges that you have facing, like what are some key things that you okay? This is this is some areas that we gotta emphasize our our effort into. Okay, so concerning well, we need to emphasize more our uh, energy. Yeah, I've been always thinking about international. That's right. why we uh, we call it uh, international, international yeah. Granada. Why? Because we know that the mentality out of Spain is different. And right. people, when we talk about Spain, it's like, 
oh, Spain, let's go. I want to go. Yeah. Sun, food, sports, tiki-taka. So it, there are a lot of positive things to capture that attention. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the first thing I said, hey, we need to invest a lot into communication, marketing mm -hmm. and communication, creating the... Uh, Uh, the website, creating uh, the Instagram, the Facebook, uh, to put and show people what we are doing. Right. Then to show them that, I said, hey, we need to have like people that are known because they've been into football. Like, for example, our uh, first coach, uh, she's now the second coach of the Spanish uh, national team uh, under 19. I just won the, the World Cup, the Women's yeah. World Cup. Then uh, the second coach, she was working for Granada Club de Football, and she was one of the founders of the female section. Then uh, our physical uh, trainer, he's an ancient uh, pro uh, football player. He was also, he's now a coach, a personal coach of uh, first division uh, uh, football players. Then uh, talking about management, uh, our colleague, he's right now in uh, Qatar, uh, he's working for uh, wow. FIFA. Yeah. Then uh, other people related to uh, startups uh, that they've been working with uh, big companies. So creating that team, that stuff, yeah. and it's uh, really important. So that's uh, where we're putting the emphasis. Yeah. And then creating the products. because. Right. To make income, we need to sell something. And selling something, we're talking about an academy, an academy. So it's a program that opened the door to students to come over to Spain, nice. study, and at the same time, keep practicing football. Yeah. And even open the door to get a, a contract or uh, get uh, elected by a, a university in the States or uh, mm. to help them out or even get a job. Because right. that's the thing, when you talk about football, Okay, you wanna every most of them they wanna become pro, but professional football it's not made for everyone. So you need to keep studying. You need to keep like what we've really done is bringing to Spain the mentality that you've got in the states about um, uh, athletes, sports, uh, yeah. students, that stuff. Right. So that's what we're, we're focusing right now, creating all these partnerships with different yeah. uh, countries. Right now, I'm working with uh, Nigeria, I'm working with Congo, uh, Belgium, England, the States, uh, Brazil, so different countries. And then also creating all these uh, trips for uh, groups that would like to come over, visit the city, the province, and at the same time, uh, practicing the language and practicing football. Yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. So, it, so it's not just uh, for players itself, right? Or like, is that kind of like the main target, or like who's who's kind of like the, the the target audience here that you wanna to bring on on this academy? Well, we are focusing to uh, sport uh, student athletes. Okay. Those yeah. are uh, the people that we would like to uh, to bring, but also clubs that would like to come over okay. and uh, stay for a. Uh, for a week or two weeks, like doing a, another product, it's the um, uh, tour, uh, mm -hmm. football tour or uh, football yeah. camps, or also internship. Now nice. we've got an intern from the States, he's doing his internship related to uh, uh, physical education. So, well, uh, we're trying to create all these different things. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, like it's just, it's the student athlete. I mean, like experience is a very obviously big, big thing in the U S and, and I think, you know, as well for just, just as you were saying, like just coming to, to Spain, you know, on, on that kind of experience, uh, you know, that, that entire kind of, um, you know, just trip and, and, and experience different kind of activities and, and of course having that base quality training that the job part of it, it's actually a very, a uh, popular travel destination for Norwegian teams as well, like younger teams, you know, to travel to Spain or like a training camp or like academy. So I, I think there's definitely like a big, big market for it and uh, a, a yeah. exciting, exciting project ahead for sure. So what, like where, um, if you wanted to kind of like, I, I guess a little bit sense kind of scope a little bit ahead and looking into, you know, why, 
um, this project right now? And, and second of all, uh, where does that kind of fit in based on the trends that you're seeing in the industry when it comes to especially women's football? Well, um, I think I've uh, understood like uh, the, um, uh, the question uh, properly. But the thing is like, uh, there are a lot of options in general talking about football for uh, men. Right. Okay. So it's easy to get into the internet and look for something easy, easy to find. Mm. But for women, when you know about like, who's gonna spend more money or who's gonna spend more time looking for something into the internet, like Beyonce said that, uh, who are on the wall? Girls. <laughs> That's right. the thing. So for football, it's the same thing. Like, but we are not giving them what they need, what mm -hmm. they want. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, women, girls that want to play football. Right. And the thing is like, hey, here you have it. Because in their countries, for sure, they're going to find it. In France, they're going to find it easily. In the States yeah. also, in Canada, in, yeah. uh, in the Netherlands, in Sweden. What if they want to go abroad? Right. Like, there you go. This is the product made for them. The yeah. one that is going to open them, the possibility to go abroad and do that. And also through that, I, I used to tell that to my students in high school in France when I was a teacher. Yeah. I used to tell them, hey, if you've got the opportunity, go and get out of your comfort zone. 100%. You will discover things that you don't even imagine. And yeah. you will learn things about yourself that you don't even know. So go right. ahead and do it. So it's a mix of things. Yeah, but I, I, think, I think it's a good point. I think it's a good mm -hmm. point for sure. And, and I mean, like, it's, it's again also about creating more, you know, specific opportunities, right, for the women's football uh, in order for them to see, okay, well, you know, they have opportunities to go to Spain if they want to, and they have a great, you know, project through your academy to to do these initiatives and obviously you know supports the overall growth of of, of women's footballs so i think it you know makes may, makes total sense and and if, if you're looking at you know obviously what if, what are some trends that you're seeing in the industry in the football industry when it comes to women's football and where do you uh, foresee or i guess that you've seen so far that the biggest growth potential lie you know these days in in women's football, working so closely with it, you know, obviously working on the academy as well. But like, what are some things that you foresee in the future? Uh, are are the coming trends in in women's football? Well, the thing is, like, we've been seeing a lot of uh, progression, uh, changement into women's football for the last ten years. Mm. But the thing is that people are still comparing women's football to men's football. Right. But we cannot really compare it because it's another world. Like, yeah. <laughs> when you talk about the history of uh, football in general, and now talking about the place, because well, I don't really want to say men's football and women's football, it's football in general. Yeah. But the place that men have in football and the place that women have in football, right. it has increased a lot. That's really good. Yeah. For example, yesterday I was talking with a I've got a visit of one of my best friends from uh, Germany. Nice. And he told me that they were leading the final, that the European Cup that they played against uh, England. They were all watching TV. They were all <laughs> here in Spain when we were playing. Nobody watched it. Yeah. So I think that some countries, they invest into real uh, promotion for women's football. Right. And uh, that's really good, but we need to be all at the same time going, hey, let's go for it. Yeah. Here, it, it, it's not like that. It's not really like that. I can say that when you talk about uh, the other day our team played, there were, I would say, 70 people uh, watching the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you talk about kids uh, with the, their parents and they, if they are uh, guys, uh, boys, uh, there are around 150. So why? Okay. Then I compare it to the girls uh, that we've got in a lower uh, division. Uh, there are few, just uh, half. We don't know. But in general, uh, I think that is going up. It's going to keep going up. Mm. But we need at least 
we're gonna see some change, I think within 10 years or something like that. We still need time. We will see what happens with the next World Cup. Yeah. I hope everything is gonna be good and uh, there are gonna be more and more people going to watch the games and then, but not only going, but also watching it on TV and then promoting and following and interacting. And uh, with that, and the, the good thing is the value, the value that the girls are giving because well, when I watch a game of uh, the girls playing, well, I really like it. It's, it yeah. like, they play really well and when they hit each other, they, they, they do it. And then yeah. if they fall well, down, they stand up and they don't start rolling like for 20 <laughs> meters and say, no, they, they, this is Yeah, no, they're, they're, so uh, they're much, to much so tougher good. in many ways, you mm -hmm. know. But and, the thing uh, is like, I know that there are more and more people, but it could be more, but down, pushing to the people that are here, like say, hey, please, please <laughs> help us do that. I, I think it's a good point too, though, is that obviously, you know, women's football have been have been growing a lot, you know, recent years and more and more money is coming into it too. But I think you're right in terms of, uh, you know, that there got to be kind of like some ways where it's not just kind of single-handedly growing, you know, kind of working more together across uh, countries, across, you know, different leagues and teams in order to help grow the industry and, and, and women's football in itself, right? And as you were saying, the more people that, you know, lift this up together, the, the more results and the faster result you will get. So I think that's, again, like a very... Um, effort that has to be done uh, through, through, through all stakeholders, you know, to kind of work on this together, you know, in order to, to get the best results. Yeah, of course. I agree completely. <laughs> and, and to kind of wrap up here a little bit, and then I think I wanted to touch upon two things. And one is obviously, you know, um, speaking a little bit about, you know, tips, advice that you have for for, for students, you know, looking to work in the in, in the football industry, and that, that that could be more at a general level. But I also wanted to ask you, like, what what could be some you know ways and some good ways for for those that want to be working with football, but you know, haven't thought about perhaps working for uh, uh, women's football or like with with a with women's football club to kind of start a journey there. What are some what are some good ways for them to to begin? Well, the first thing that I would tell the students, that's something I also tell uh, the interns that come to our structure, say, hey, if you want to get a job, it's because you really want to get a job. Like, you're going to have to do efforts that you cannot even imagine. Because sometimes they want everything to be given. But mm -hmm. it's not like that. We need to fight for things. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, things that are already here, People, they've been fighting like for many, many years to go up, 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 up. So I would tell them, do you want an internship? Do you want to get a job? Fight for it. Show what you're capable of. So related to women's football, you cannot go and say, hey, I know everything. No. You say, hey, I want to learn everything. I want to go for it. I want to practice. I want to know how people think in another country. One thing, for example, hey, don't only look for options in your country. Try to look oh. for options in other countries. Good point. Th th that's something I've made, for example, to create my structure here. I've been visiting the structures in uh, three different countries besides mm. Spain yeah. to know how they work and how things are over there. Because right. in, in some countries, it's easier to create a structure than here. Yeah. So for them, it would be like that, like, hey, don't just focus into the city you are. Try to go to another country, learn over there, the way of uh, doing this, uh, try to make connections, really important, the networking, the networking, but networking like a real one that comes yeah. from here, but not <laughs> from the pocket. <laughs> it's not that, I just go there because I want to make money. No, no, no. We, we all want to make money, for sure. It's important. So we cannot work for free, but for that, we need to start from the lowest place and then keep fighting for it. So it would be that, like, I would tell them, look for options, not only in the place you are, and even in the low, uh, in the lower place of the pyramidal structure that you could find in the club, Yeah, we learn different things. And we need to learn that. And then if one day you go to the top, don't forget that you were here before. 
important to be said. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a perfect way to wrap this up. Uh, with that, Juan, I would like to thank you, you know, so much for, for taking the time, you know, for sharing all the exciting stuff you're doing with the club, with the academy, you know, all the great tips you have. And, and once again, thanks, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Y saludos internacionales. <laughs> awesome. And uh, for those of you that have been here all the way at the end, you know, make sure to like the video, subscribe as well, so you get free insights every week from leaders like Juan, you know, sharing their tips, sharing their insights with you. And of course, if you haven't already, you know, make sure to sign up at sportinglevel.com to finding jobs, connect with the right kind of people, start building your professional sports career. So you can do that for free. And Juan, as a final, final kind of thing uh, we have in the podcast here, we always... We always do like, uh, how can I say, it's like a traditional podcast tradition. So I have to, I have to teach you a little bit Norwegian. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Right, there you go. So with every video we do, we always finish with Vi snakkes, which means see you later in Norwegian. So that's what you have to say. Vi snakkes. There you go. Good job. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Han. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk very soon. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.